Hello everyone, welcome to Rasayan Academy. So guys, this is a very short and a crisp video for all of you. And I'm going to talk about over in this video ki how you're going to gain four marks by doing a very simple question. So this is uh, what I have taken from December 2014, a previous year question, which is, uh, I guess, very important. Also, very, very easy. Like just watching this video, you're going to get this uh, reaction just a two line reaction it is and you will be able to solve your own questions if there is any question in the future iit jam exam or csi net or gate examination or wherever right so let's uh, begin talking about this a very very simple question from csi net december 2018 the major product formed in the following reaction is so you see that there is a ketone and all the on the alpha position you are having a thiol group in the first step, you are adding metachloroperbenzoic acid, one equivalent. Second step, you are adding the an acetic anhydride. Third step, aqueous Na2CO3, which is uh, providing you slightly basic medium. So this is there to provide you a basic medium. Why do you require the basic medium? That we are going to see eventually. So yes, before moving onwards to our video, if you already haven't subscribed to the channel, please do and also share it with your friends guys. Also press the notification bell icon so that you get all the updates from my channel. Alright, so let's begin talking about this reaction. So this is our name reaction 54. We have done so many reaction, name reactions specifically. And it's a very simple reaction called Pumarer rearrangement. A very simple reaction. Let's talk about this. So it is the transformation of sulfoxides. So what do we call as a sulfoxide? Now very recently we have talked about the Claydon book, this chapter number 27 from Claydon that everything about sulfur we have already talked about. So who is a sulfide, a sulfoxide or a sulfone? You already know, right? So I'll also put up the link right over here so that you can visit that session, live session. Okay. So transformation of sulfoxides into alpha acyloxy thioethers using acetic anhydride. Just a plain simple reaction. Let's look at it. So you're starting with a sulfoxide. Now sulfur having one oxygen will be a sulfoxide. Sulfur having two oxygens will be a sulfone. Sulfur having uh, no oxygen will be a sulfide. As simple as that. So this is your sulfoxide just like your DMSO that is uh, dimethyl sulfoxide isn't it? Okay so the primary requirement of this rearrangement reaction is that you must have a alpha hydrogen that is most important okay. Yes yeah, so let's see to this sulfoxide molecule what we are doing in the presence of acetic anhydride what happens is the oxygen gets eliminated from sulfur and it's kind of rearranging from sulfur to its alpha position and we are having a acyl group attached over here. So this is the primary reaction involved in your previous year question PYQ. Okay so yes let's talk about the mechanism first of all a very simple one what happens is guys you often you often write the sulfoxides into this manner and it's perfectly fine why because uh, sulfur when it forms odd number of bonds will have a positive charge either it's 3 or 5 and so on and when sulfur has vacant d orbitals so it can form a pi bond as well p pi d pi bonding also possible with sulfur so if you write this form or this form both are correct so sulfur is going to attack over the carbonyl carbon the acyl group is going to leave this is what you are getting an intermediate acylation on the oxygen so sulfur will have a positive charge over here absolutely now what does the other acyl group which has eliminated what does it do it removes the alpha proton from the sulfur right because sulfur has a positive charge and this becomes a sulfonium ion yes it becomes a sulfonium ion when the sulfur has a positive charge and the alpha carbon has a very acidic proton which could be removed in this way so that you get a sulfonium ion once again just that with the removal of oxygen so this is your intermediate that you are getting all right let's move onwards with the mechanism so what do you do with this intermediate this is also once again your sulfonium ion only 
but it's a different sulf sulfonium ion why because the resonance structure that you can draw for this is like this so basically what is this molecule on the alpha position there is a carbocation which is being stabilized by the lone pairs of sulfur in this way also you can write all right very simple now to the alpha position where there is a carbocation the acetate group can attack if it attacks it att attaches on the alpha carbon so you started with a sulfoxide just in the presence of acetic anhydride you are going to end up with the alpha now you get it alpha acyloxy ether uh, acyloxy thioether theek hai alpha acyl thioether okay this is what you end up with in this molecule over here so the same reaction we are going to utilize pumara rearrangement in the previous year question let's talk about this reaction over here so yes guys first thing first a very simple one that here you see that your sulfur must have an alpha carbon so this is the alpha carbon only on one side it has a alpha carbon on the other side it has a phenyl group so there is only one possibility where you can remove the hydrogen from definitely from here okay so yes also it's a doubly acidic alpha hydrogen you will get to know why so first thing first guys what do you expect from the meta chloroperbenzoic acid it will be heteroatom oxidation in the first step so sulfur gets converted to sulfoxide in the first step only one equivalent you are not getting the bare villager rearrangement absolutely not when there is a heteroatom present this is not going to happen you will get the sulfoxide now the sulfoxide once again in the second step you are having the acetic anhydride what does it do sulfoxide is going to attack on this carbonyl the bond is going to open up the pi bond opens up first as you know because it's weaker then this is what you get right there will be sulfur oxygen oxygen pay acylation a uh, positive charge on sulfur because it has formed odd number of bonds and one acetate group is free from here from this side it's free what is the free group going to do it's going to remove a very acidic proton why this proton is very acidic obviously it's close to a sulfonium cation but it's also close to a alpha uh, it's also an alpha carbon to your keto group so it's doubly acidic that's why very quickly it's going to kind of uh, get eliminated and that gives you something like this a double bond okay and a double bond s and ph and the sulfur has a positive charge so this is what you get from here okay we are going to continue our mechanism in the next page what will happen next so here you got okay just a second there is no oxygen over here yes just this one and a double bond s and ph <clears throat> this is what we get right yeah so what are we going to do further from here absolutely guys the acetate is going to attack the free acetate which has removed is going to attack onto this carbon and it somehow it gives you this molecule s and ph the positive charge is removed since the nucleophile has attacked so you get a acyl group on the alpha carbon so this is what you wanted this is the product of the pumara rearrangement but what next in the last step there is aqueous basic workup actually aqueous na2co3 which means basic workup so what are you going to do with the basic workup the base oh minus is going to give you ester hydrolysis and that's why you will get this molecule very simply all right so the ester got converted to alcohol as simple as that now what does this alcohol do 
there is still a base in the medium the base is going to take away this proton as soon as the base takes away the proton you will have some kind of major rearrangement reaction taking place it will be o minus that you get what can you expect guys there will be rearrangement in this way either there could be uh, you know <clears throat> a rearrangement but here you see that sulfur is a very good leaving group isn't it all the chlorides all the halides uh, except fluorine as well as the sulfides and uh, all those groups which are very polarizable in nature they are very very good leaving groups and that is why sulfur is also a very good leaving group so sulfur would rather prefer to leave as a sulfide like this and from the medium it's going to take up it take away a proton from water and leave as your thiol all right so this is your byproduct and the product of this reaction is a diketone a 1 2 diketone do we have that yes we have that in option number d this is your diketone that you get as the product of this reaction so till this part only the second step was pumara rearrangement over here you must also know how you are going to use your reagents the first part metachlorobenzoic acid also gives you you know metachlorobenzoic acid has three uses three major uses if you want to know right just in case so yeah let's say if you have this simple alkene so metachloro per benzoic acid will always epoxidize an electron rich alkene but if you are having a you know enone system in this way metachloro per benzoic acid is not going to give you is not going to give you this kind of a epoxide never because it transfers a electrophilic oxygen metachloro per benzoic acid is also used for the conversion of ketones into esters that we call the bare villager oxidation also if you are having a sulfur or you are having a selenium or nitrogen it is also there to cause the hetero atom oxidation in this way all right so it works the same for sulfur selenium even for nitrogen and that's why we have the cope elimination reaction right so yes so these are some of the uses of metachloro per benzoic acid second step where we are using the acetic uh, anhydride that is your pumara rearrangement third step is the hydrolysis in the basic medium so i just hope that you got this very simple reaction and we will be doing more uh, videos like this also don't forget to subscribe to the channel guys and also share this video as much as possible i know it's going to be really helpful for all the students preparing for their examination thank you so much i'll see you in the next video now